Welcome to the Football Friends Podcast. My name is Gage, I'm joined here by Petty. I think that's, that's the best welcome you've ever done. I was ready. Well, yeah. you, you sounded prepared, you sounded um, regal. Yes, okay, good. Nice. <laughs> uh, also, welcome. Yes, no Ash again this week, he is battling the meat and <laughs> <laughs> he's stuck at work yeah yeah pounding some meat pounding so- <laughs> pounding his own meat <laughs> but that's all good the show must go on so how you been um yeah fine not so bad mm-hmm. just enjoying enjoying a week off of uh, premier league football yes but um only to be to be struck by the drama of world cup qualification and the boredom of international friendly week if you're um a previously qualified team yes yeah <laughs> like you said uh, less matches to watch for us this week but uh, a lot more work to figure out what the fuck we're gonna talk about <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you're right so they we've had some we had some world cup qualifiers which were rather interesting we've had a few more teams added to uh, our in. yeah a few more teams confirmed and a few teams confirmed out dismissed yes yeah and you know well, and i suppose the, the the best one to mention of course is our euro champions it, uh, italy oh, will not be in the qatar world cup my god okay so i want to start with a question okay that is not necessarily linked directly to the game do you think the the winners of um continental competitions should qualify for the world cup automatically well, they use other continental competitions to qualify people, don't they? And you don't even have to win them. Uh, good question. Good, good point. So you mean the, the qualifiers, the the, yeah. the small well, qualifying? Well, look, groups. we were looking at this here. You know, some of the some of these are here, like um, you know, Conmebol uh, winner or second place or whatever. See, so yeah, like it's just some of these qualifications are from local sort of tourneys whatever yeah um that's true yeah and you yeah like you say um i mean the south american one is amazing because they just it's just like cool so we're gonna just have a a league and it's gonna be every team yeah so and if you're fourth you're in so that's what i'm saying like all those south american teams they all play each other to decide who goes into the world cup and europe we have just had a tournament where they played each other so I, I don't see why you can't use that as a qualification as well. Like the winner. Just, ju- yeah, just the winner. Yeah. And um, so what would you do? Uh, you know, I'm just picking your brain here. Mm-hmm. What would you do in the, um, so let's say, uh, I think I think in Italy's group in qualifying, um, they were paired with Switzerland who won the group. Mm-hmm. And so they came, and then they came second. And whoever was third might have been Northern Ireland. Uh, do they just go to the playoff and Italy go in automatically? Yeah, well, I suppose Italy would have never been in... Uh, so you're saying that so I'm saying because, it, because the, the Euros would happen partway through the qualification process, right? Yes. So I suppose you're right. That kind of does... Uh, so like it would, you'd have to remove Italy from where they are already in the process, right? Is that what you're saying? I'm, I'm saying that... Yeah. Because, because, like you say, the Euros happens midway through the qualification process, mm. and it, anyone can win it, theoretically. So Macedonia could have won, England could have won, Ireland could have won. Mm. I don't think Ireland were in it, but forget about it. Um, and then whoever's below them in their qualifying group, do they just get a, a pass for coming third? Do they just go into the, the playoff? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, it, but but the thing with that as well is the, the the league the formatting it like a league is new as well, right? For qualification, a lot of time it was. Well, like the I mean, because they used the they used a tournament this time as well, right? Ah, uh, those are just the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, that's what because of the way that um. Because it, sometimes it's just a different number of teams. And, uh, you know, sometimes the World Cup's not in Europe. So they have to have, um, you know, I, th- I th- think Europe gets 13 spots or something like that. Oh. Um, 
Uh, so to find the final three, um, they had to rigmarole a whole um, second place of the groups tournament. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, see, I want to say yes. I want to say yes to your question. Italy should just have qualified directly, but and obviously that's going to mean some issue somewhere in the qualification process. Yeah, um, but it's and, not without issue anyway. Yeah. Pl- plus, I think, so when you go, when you finish second in a UEFA qualifying group, you get put into a, another table with all the other second places, and if your points are too low from the games you earn in your group, um, then you don't go into the, the playoffs At all, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's what they would have done previously. That's what they do now. So if you finish, if you were the worst second place team, you'd just be bombed off. Mm. Okay. One, sorry, one, one last thing I was going to say. Yep. Well, a, a lot of these qualification games have actually been delayed too, right? Like we're, we're a lot yeah. later in the process on where we should be right now. Uh, yes. So I, yeah, maybe it would time out a little bit better under normal circumstances anyway. Well, yeah, we also have the World Cup coming up earlier and we've had, uh, I don't know if you've heard, there's a big pandemic, but... Oh, well, there was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, fine. There still is um, concern from the masses over yeah. some some slight cough that some people have had. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we've got that. Um, and yeah, yeah, like like, like say, there's time constraints and it's it's just been fucked backwards um yeah well it's just because it's a shame that you know italy put in a very well they were completely undefeated through the entire tournament as well so like to suggest that they're not you know a, a contender for winning the world cup they've also only won one of their last six qualifying games including that one Ooh. they drew twice with switzerland with Bul- they drew with bulgaria they drew with northern ireland they were during that second half of qualifying they sucked mm, they mm. sucked ass the, yep, and, yeah. and then they got beat by North Macedonia at home so mm. even even if they hadn't sucked ass through the qualifying process and and everyone had gone oh it was going to be Italy versus Portugal for a place in the World Cup you know it's going to be you know someone's going to miss out yeah someone's going to miss out because of their fucking hubris and their terrible game against North Macedonia mm. honestly if you're the champions of Europe and you don't beat North Macedonia fuck you yeah yeah I, it, it, while, if, while we if, were watching the highlights I was thinking the same thing I was like they're playing so badly they don't deserve to be <laughs> if if England were the champions of Europe and we'd lost like that uh, we'd under I'd revo- I'd change my answer to the question about the champions qualifying. I mean, like, cool, we don't we don't fucking deserve it. Mm. So Italy should feel the same. A- and lol, they missed out on two in a row. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I yeah I, I see what you mean. It, it, it's pretty weak, and they only have themselves to blame. Really, they played very poorly in that game, and they took thirty shots. Wow, that's so bad. And that's, yeah. that's football man. I told I told you this before, but it's football manager stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, you 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 quite impressed with the goal? Um, yeah, good finish for the North Macedonian guy. Yeah, yeah um, Alexander Tchaikovsky. Yeah, great great finish in the end, and yeah, Don Donnarumma just not ready for it. I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a great Beaten. finish. It's, it's hard to goal. save. It's hard to save. So it's, it, it, it looked like there was a bit of um, moisture on the surface and yeah. it just it just zipped and it bobbles because he, he it, it, it like hits the ground and yeah. you know it's, it's, it's a good shot it's, yeah it's a good shot so yeah it, it just rip yeah. yeah when I was doing my uh, I wouldn't even call it research but I'll use the word research um, we, for, we do thorough research well, don't listen to when this I was doing my thorough research for this yeah, game yeah, yeah. Um, I saw a compilation video, a small compilation video of this guy's. Um, I be- believe he played for uh, Palermo in the Italian league, and this game was played in Palermo. So he's got a lot of experience in this stadium, <laughs> and has scored that exact goal from that exact spot in that exact stadium like half a dozen times. So 
and in the th- in the thread below, it mentioned like on Henri's goal against um, Man United, where he basically has his his back turned to to goal, mm-hmm. and then just flicks it up and 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 scores. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's right like, now. and he says it. He's like, if you if you know the stadium you're playing in so well, you can like look at old man Jones in row thirty four Z and go okay well if he's there and i'm here then i need to put this angle and this spin on the ball yeah. to make it go there you know where the goal is yeah yeah so what i'm saying is alexander Tchaikovsky is as good as thierry Henry. <laughs> i see <laughs> yeah and in that gap F- yeah for, for, for that moment no, no no in that exact square of that mm. exact pitch i see oh i get you yeah, yeah okay yeah, well, that's uh, well. Look, clearly the Italian team didn't do as thorough research as you, because otherwise they would have just like put a man stand in the spot <laughs> for the whole game. Yeah, stand and here. Statistically, he won't score. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, well, he might, but he won't if you stand there. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Oh, Fuck him. Well, you miss out. I, mean, then, I think in the future they'll probably they're gonna they're gonna increase the number of teams in the World Cup anyway. It's probably inevitable. So North Macedonia will make it. <laughs> well, North Macedonia seems to be a good footballing nation. <laughs> well, yeah, they're certainly hardy. Like a, they're a, 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 a well, chisel like, a chiselled race. It's like when Iceland had a good run you know, not yeah. that long ago, right? Then yeah, yeah, and then dropped off. Yeah, you know, had a good run just in time to fuck off England, and then yeah, um, well, see, th- fucked off in Macedonia. They just fucked off Italy, and then fucked off themselves. And like <laughs> I said before, we would have been in that position. Yeah, maybe. So, is that how math works? Yeah. Okay, let's go with it. Yeah, math. Um, mass. Hmm. Sidonia. Um, so they played again, and they played Portugal. Yeah, and um, and they didn't win. Yeah, well, Portugal were probably as patchy as Italy in, in qualifying. Maybe slightly better. Slightly better. Uh, oh, yeah. well, well, I remember last international break we had, they were getting shitty results too. You yeah. know, they were not... And they were not at their best. Not and then, performing to the sum of their parts. Yes. And then this time they put Ronaldo back in the team and <laughs> yeah. it seemed to work. And then Bruno Fernandes was able to... His second send goal. Send Portugal into the World Cup. His, his second goal was a, a, th- a thing of beauty. A very stunning goal. We're great volley. Just, and I was saying to you before, doesn't even break his stride. He just walks forward. That's the, the finish he puts on it. All it involves basically is just turning his foot at a slight outward angle, but it's exactly the same step as he was taking anyway. So, it's... killer finish. Great reaction. Just. Yeah. Yeah. I wish... You wish he was that good in the Premier League. Yeah, well, I wish we played North Macedonia every week. I mean, he'd be doing that. That would be a strange league. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know what league... Sounds like a fixture like Brentford would set up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. We're talking about... (laughs) <laughs> yes now there was a good that was a good throwback yeah that great throwback <laughs> pullback yeah yeah I was, uh, don't even know what episode that was <laughs> it must first have been one. the first um, first few yeah yeah um, yeah so so Portugal's in and they're gonna they're gonna be in the World Cup and this is probably I mean Ronaldo signed what a five year contract so this might not even be his last one five year contract with who Manchester United. Uh, no, it was only it was two years. Um, okay. What are you saying? He signed another one just recently. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, no, it was it's two years. I yeah. thought it was. Okay, I thought it was, I'm sure it was five. No, he said he'd play for another five years. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Then I, well, okay, okay. Well, I think maybe going on, assuming he's telling the truth, hmm. or he is correct, and well, no I've been, large. I've, I've been throwing that figure around because Lewandowski said the same thing. Yeah. They both said they'll play for five more years. Oh, yeah, we'll come on to him later. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> big, big Rob, <laughs> big Bobby L. Mm-hmm. Um, this might not even be his last World Cup. No, because no, there's, I, gonna, I so. there's gonna be one in six months, something like that. Yeah, and then another one in four years. Surely, yeah, look, if if, if Miroslav Klose can can play <laughs> for Germany just for the last chance to break records and stuff, you know, I'm sure we'll have a 40 year old Ronaldo. 
on at least on the bench for yeah, the next World Cup. His so the next one will be twenty twenty six, and he'll yeah he'll be forty one. Mm. Where is this next one? I can't remember. Has it been twenty six? Yeah. Oh, good question. Has it been announced yet? I don't. I think it. Fuck it. It should have been right. It but... should have been. But I don't know. I want to say it's in the US. That's what I thought too. US. I, I'm pretty sure that's next. Yeah. Uh, what did you say? 2026. 2026. Um, yeah. So R- R- Ronaldo um, provided the first assist for for Bruno, and he and he, he tucked it away pretty nicely. Um, oh, uh, f- France. This is France. No. Look on the right. What? Oh, Canada, Mexico, United States joint. Oh, yes. Good God, that's right. That's I, an I, absolute monstrosity. I knew it was a joint one. Yeah. I'm, I'm sick of that. Actually, joint World Cups. Can, well, Canada, Mexico, United States. Yeah. Yeah, but that that's literally a continent. <laughs> well, and when you consider that the USA has plenty of stadiums they could probably host the whole tournament in one city <laughs> with how many fucking stadiums they have yeah like they don't why does it need to be spread out because it's hosted in 16 different cities yeah okay well let's let's hopefully we won't be doing the podcast in four years so we won't have to talk about it um oh okay okay so like canada and mexico will only host 10 matches each the that's, red- that's still quite a few but fair enough yeah Oh, this tournament will be the first to include 48 teams. Fuck that. There you go. Uh, it's a, yeah, that's what it actually yeah. says. Fuck, my nan's going to play. Yeah. But she didn't include a women's team just for a laugh. 48 teams, yeah. Oh, well, Italy looks like you'll probably get it next time then. <laughs> I'm going to call it now. Can I, can I put a tenor on for Italy to not qualify for the next World Cup? Yep, done. All right. Done. I'll shake on that. It's fair enough. And yep. this is going to be broadcast. Yep. All right. Cool. Broadca- <laughs> broadcast to the world. 10 bitcoins. 10. No. Okay. Not- <laughs> Hang on. Oh, sorry. Honest. Just that'll be the dominant currency in 2026. Yeah, okay, fine. We'll, we'll move to El Salvador <laughs> and then we'll, we'll worry about that later. Hey, well, El Salvador will probably qualify themselves under the 48 uh, teams. <laughs> well, fun- funny, funny that. Yeah. Well, we, we just about played them, New Zealand, in the um, mm-hmm. in a qualifier. The extra qualifier, yes. But we, the team, the team we did get mm. was Costa Rica. Yes, we have one match. We have one match to go after. Our, what was it? Yeah, we put what was it Panama or something five nil. Ah uh, no, five nil against um, the Solomons. Solomon Islands. Yeah, I knew it was some island. So we, <laughs> pa- <laughs> Panama's not an island. <laughs> Whatever. It's it's a canal. Yeah. Um, yeah. So New Zealand um, strolled healthily through um, Oceania. Swam, mm-hmm. I suppose, yep. um, and then kept swimming, mm-hmm. and they're gonna go over and play the last game in Doha. I think it's in June, um, and we'll play Costa Rica, mm-hmm. who managed to beat the United States. Uh, unfortunately, then mm-hmm. to, for them, they needed to beat them by about six goals. But they only managed to. They only managed to. Yeah. yeah. What a what a bunch of losers. Mm, I know, pathetic, uh, but. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Co- Costa Rica have they have they have qualified before in the they've World definitely Cup? played before. Yeah. Yes, so they, they, they they I think they've qualified probably more than us as well. Uh, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, uh, that that's just what I sort of the vibe I got. They they, they seem to be a bit, have a bit more experience, international experience, and that's what everyone's saying. So they think that yeah, this will be a tough match, which you know I yeah. expect. But with the I think with the form of of the All Whites at the moment, it's it's very promising because. A lot of the uh, a lot of these players are playing very well, like you know, uh, Bill Tuiloma and uh, yeah. Kacha and yeah. like all the uh, that we seem to now have a lot of Kiwis in a lot of foreign leagues. Yeah, there's a lot of Kiwis playing in um, in Holland, um, yeah, America, a lot in America, it, quite a few in America, and MLS and um, and, uh, and big big Woodsy, yeah, yeah, the, Chris, the tree who will we, thankfully remain in the the Premier League because he yeah. jumped from the relegated potentially relegated burnley 200 iq move from 100%. from yeah. chris wood yeah because at the time i was like well that's a bit of a this bit of a it's pa- like well, parallel move right like, yeah, it's not, yeah. yeah it's like <laughs> he's literally gone down in the league <laughs> yeah yeah but then he's like no nah. <laughs> like no 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 200 mil doesn't get relegated bro <laughs> <laughs> ah yes 
Yeah, so um, so, so I, I pray that'd be awesome to see New Zealand in another World Cup. I mean, you know, we'll probably be in the next one anyway. That's we have teams, <laughs> yeah. but uh, it's cool to quali- Well, we can say that we're better than Italy. Yeah, I mean, I I, and, I genuinely think New Zealand would have beaten this league. Well, last time they didn't beat us. We were under. Well, it was we, it was one all. It was one all. I'll take it. I'm def- I definitely take that. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, we're shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, 40, 48 team World Cup next time. New Zealand will probably... Oceano mm. probably will just be given one spot. Because at the moment they're given... It, Less it's, than one. They call it 0. 0.5. Yeah, right. Which so means... You have to play off with... One, one South if America you win well. a playoff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, we'll probably have one whole spot and then one qualifier. So... Australia and New Zealand might be pretty set for... Imagine if we got each other in the group. That'd Imagine be- if New Zealand, Australia... New Zealand, Australia, England, mm. <laughs> South Africa. Yeah, I wonder how it work. That, no, we'll probably end up playing North Macedonia. That could be a real group. Because <laughs> you... Uh, oh. Well, it depends how they... I love it. How they change it. We'll I'm see, in. We'll, we'll, I'm, we'll have to see. I'm in. Yes. Yeah, so that's... um. It's pretty good. I'm, 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 I'm really stoked. And you know, in a in a one-off game, as we've seen with the uh, Macedonians, you can, you, you know, you know a, a team can beat a team better than them. Yeah, we've just got to get past Kayla Nevis. Mm-hmm. Don't even worry about it, bro. Yep. Easy. I have faith. I have, I have faith in the boys. Yeah. 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 We'll be. We'll be. We'll be utterly fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to turn the world white. Um, you mean we're going to make them surrender? But no, because it's all whites. Okay, well, let's go with that. Yeah, everyone will be all white. <laughs> okay, who who do you want next? Uh what do you got? Uh well, I have the uh, the the replay the okay he the replay good. of Senegal versus Egypt. The ah, replay yes. of yes. the African Cup of Nations final. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and this one also went down to a penalty shootout. The first game, so the first game was one nil. Mm. Uh, they won Egypt, and the second game was one nil. Right, Senegal mm-hmm. won, and Mo Salah did not did not leave this one to chance. He took the first penalty for Egypt. Oh, interesting, and had about 50 laser pointers shone on his face. Oh, really? Yeah. And oh, and he, he's just like looking at the referee like, like what? A, what? Mm. That's bullshit. And he, 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 so, I mean, the referee can't, I don't know, I don't know what's meant to happen there. Is, it, is he meant to just stand there until they stop? Yeah, what can you do? That's so, he, uh, like a big screen to... <laughs> yeah, he, he'll wear a visor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gets given like some special gla- laser-proof glasses, like what Cyclops wears. Honestly, in X-Men. Im- imagine Mo Salah taking a penalty with sunglasses on. That's it, that'd be the coolest thing ever. That'd be the ultimate like Tinder Tinder photo. And then, <laughs> I don't think Mo Salah would struggle. I mean, if it was me, like, how yeah, are yeah. you going to be taking a penalty for Egypt? Mo Salah, I don't think Mo Salah would be interested in a Tinder profile. <laughs> to be honest, what, of your <laughs> Tinder profile. Um, no. At all. Yeah. <laughs> this is strange. How are you taking a penalty for Egypt? Uh, look, it's... <laughs> I don't know how we got there, but that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Several planes and a, a boat journey later. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And and he missed. And once again, it was up to Mane to, to be the hero. And he took the decisive penalty and he scored. Oh, man. So, unfortunately... The pharaohs um, don't, they don't go. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, obviously someone had to miss out and I'm gutted. Yeah. But. So after the match, like Mo Salah turns to his Egyptian teammates and says, look guys, I'm sorry. It looks like you guys aren't going to win any trophies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he says with the league cup tucked under his arm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. After they, he loses again, and he goes like, "Fuck! Thank God that guy plays for my team." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so Senegal, Cameroon, Tunisia, Ghana. Well, uh, I'm very happy with uh, Tunisia. 
Because yeah, well, my well, boy Hannibal Mejbury will be playing in the World Cup. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. And that's probably really good experience for a 18 year old. And Oh, yeah. And has he has a big role in Tunisia as well. So yeah, he'll, that's... he'll play three games, get knocked out. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah. Oh, maybe if only Italy had qualified, they could have beaten them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they were. I mean, in a 48 team World Cup, Tunisia is in every time. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. I'm, uh, I like that. Uh, and yeah, you said, oh, we've got, yeah, Ghana and. Oh, yeah, Canada. Canada qualified too. They're not in the African Cup of Nations. Sorry, I'm just looking at the list here. Because this is the only second time Canada's ever qualified. Really? Yeah, yeah. When was their first? 1986. 86. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Well, um, yeah. So, Canada Canada obviously finished... What were they? Third in the... Yeah, it says... Uh, th- the, yeah, they, they're third in CONCACAF. You have, you have Sorry, third round winners. It says yeah, winners of the third round of conference. Yeah, okay. So that they they finished top of the um top of the league in yeah. in that one. That's mm-hmm. outstanding. Old um who's the boy who plays for Bayern Munich? It, it hasn't been him anyway. He's been uh, he's been injured all season. He really? had a he had a, a, a he only just started training again. Huh. You mean Alfonso Davies? I mean Alfonso Davies. Yeah, yeah. But they've they've got another fellow called David. Who plays yeah. up front? The, yeah, uh, yeah, he's good. In my head, in my head, I don't know what his first name is, but in my head, it's Alphonse. So it's something like, like that. Yeah. Alphonse David and Alfonso Davies. No, no, it's not like no. No, it should be David David David. Yeah, <laughs> Dave David. Dave Davis. Yeah. Um, Dave the Rave. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we've got so we've, we've got those African nations in, mm-hmm. and um, of course the Asian nations have also been decided all but one game so we've got japan mm-hmm. south korea iran and uh and saudi arabia for some reason are an asian nation so, so yeah saudi arabia have qualified now and japan uh, yeah south korea iran yeah my my only memory of saudi arabia at at a world cup is um getting absolutely um ball blasted by marislav closer specifically yes i think it was eight nil and I think Closer scored. I want to say he scored five. That's fucked. Uh, he what a okay. It, it, we were talking about Costa Rica before. In their mm-hmm. qualifying series, fourteen games, they scored thirteen goals. Closer scored five in one game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. Was that so? Wait, was that in twenty eighteen or was that? No, I no? want to say it was two thousand two. Yep, that's, that's... Or 2006? Yeah, those are both in the list. That I'm okay, well... <laughs> One of those, sense. yeah. Yeah, it was certainly a year. Mm. It began with two. Um, yeah, that was that was a real good one. Yeah, they're all through. And then, yeah, I jumped ahead a little bit before. So, from America so far, we have Ecuador, Uruguay, and Canada. Um, that's cool. Yeah, Ecuador and Uruguay joining um, Argentina and Brazil from the South American lineup. I, honestly, I said I said it about ten minutes ago. South America's um, qualifying series is it's just a party. It's amazing. They, it's just like look, we've got we've got ten teams. Let's just play a league. Simple. Top half goes. Bottom half doesn't. Fuck you. Yep, that works. Hmm. See, so yeah, they've um, they've all been decided, and um, Brazil. So Brazil, um, they've got one game left to play. The game that got called off because of COVID shit against Argentina. Against Argentina. Mm-hmm. So they've got a, a, literally a super classico to play to finish off. In seventeen games, forty goals they scored and five what? five conceded. Uh, what five? That's <laughs> how do you do that um, holy shit that's well they've amazing. got two goalkeepers to choose from and they're both they're playing like... two goalkeepers <laughs> <laughs> they're playing two go- <laughs> to be honest I think if you score five goals against two goalkeepers it's pretty good yeah yeah. especially mm. if they're Alisson and Edison 
<laughs> well, yeah, that'd be pretty OP. <laughs> well, yeah, what it should be is Allison stays in the box and Edison mm-hmm. is like... Comes out. Uh, like a 25-yard keeper. Yeah, yeah, that works. Sweeper, sweeper keeper, who literally plays sweeper. Okay. I'm, yeah, I like the sound of that. I mean, to make, and, and to make matters better, question mark, um, a 38-year-old Danny Alves playing right back. Uh, yep. I hope he goes. I mean... He's so, played yeah. for he's played for most of the qualifying games. Yep. And he's playing for Barcelona. Playing for Barcelona. Yeah, I don't see why not. Why not? Yeah. That'd be, that'd be hilarious. The goal gremlin. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, is he a gremlin or a goblin? I think he's a gremlin. I used to say gold demon. Because he has the demonic eyes. He does. I think he's got beautiful eyes. Yeah. In isolation. <laughs> like, you just Beautifully at, terrified. You just look at his eyes, it's like, they're, oh, they're, oh, they're quite... He's, yeah. he's possessed by the football demon. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. You mean Diego Maradona? Yeah. But Diablo Maradona. Di- good. There you go. That's, that's the name of the podcast. <laughs> Diablo Maradona. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, if only he was lining up for Argentina, then they they would have conceded way more than five. Yeah, they might have actually won something under Messi's tenure. Oh, they have now. Yeah, they did. True, you're right. Yeah, he gave. I'm, the, sorry, he, I'm living in the past. Yeah, he, he scored the goal in the final. Do you remember? What? Well, yeah, it, it took so long. I, you know, it was like the it was like a it was almost like a cliche. It was last year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he sprung up from the underworld and. Well, it was like making a joke about um, Leo DiCaprio not having an Oscar, and then he but then he did get one in the end. You know, That's, yeah. yeah. It was like a meme before it wasn't. I mean, <laughs> or like, or like Harry Kane would never score in August until he did. Until he did, and then it was still a meme. Yeah. yeah so then when, so then when it, I forget that he actually <laughs> broke it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, is there anything we haven't uh, listed here? Uh, oh, we haven't mentioned Poland. Yeah. So uh, Poland won. Yes. Poland. Poland, Poland beat Sweden. Yeah. Um, and of course, Lewandowski scored. Who else? Okay, um, pe- who's the fellow? That, that was that was a rhetorical question. <laughs> okay, well, I, I literally have an answer for you. <laughs> okay, um, great. Zelensky. Oh, what? From, uh, the, the Prime the... Minister of Ukraine. Yes, the Prime Minister of Ukraine <laughs> left the Ukraine, whatever mm. he's doing there. Um, pl- somehow played for Poland's national team, yeah. and um, and scored. Oh, okay. No, the Napoli midfielder. Ah, Pete, thanks Pete, for clarifying. Peter Zelensky? Pete, yeah, Peter. Pete, yeah, Peter. Him. Mm-hmm. Pete. Yep. Petey Z. So he, yeah, he's in there. And um, I think the last European spot, we just need to wait for uh, whatever happens with Ukraine. So Ukraine is yes, so, uh, scheduled to play Scotland. Mm-hmm. And the winner of that is scheduled to play Wales. Yes, so because Russia have... That they don't get their game. Yeah. That one is, is off, and Ukraine, you're saying that they probably will have a chance to play it. I think the, the chance will be offered to them, but... Well, from what I've understood, a lot of the players are, are fighting, fighting in the war. Yeah. So, <laughs> there Which may is, not be players to play. Yeah, incredibly based, but <laughs> yeah. but um, it, it might mean that one of Scotland or Wales compete in the World Cup, yeah. which for me is, is, is gross. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But that's just my bias. I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah, well, it, look, well, remember that you'll also get to see them eliminated from the World Cup. Yeah. Yeah. They get to lose in front of everyone, in front of the billion people that watch. In front of the world, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but... Would you, see, would you rather them... Well, yeah, that's it. They could not qualify and no one cares or they lose in front of the whole world. <laughs> um, no, because if they don't qualify, no one gives a shit like before. They don't even exist. And everyone just goes, oh, Wales didn't qualify. Their shit. No, no. So, okay. So Scotland didn't qualify. What you're saying their is, shit. Yeah. But if, if people see them play, they'll go, oh, pity. Mm. Like, and, and maybe they'll get a point against oh. Spain or something and people will sort of... Um, rally around them, and I I don't want that. I want well, people to step on them. Well, I was I was hoping it would be like you know if they don't qualify, it's like they don't exist. But then if they do, people are going, why do they exist? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just imagine a world without Scotland. That's yeah. Look, it, it eases my mind. I don't have time for daydreaming. Okay. Yeah, I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time for pornography. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think it's, it's probably about 
Yeah. For um Yeah. In Levin, terms Levin Poland ski straight into the World Cup. Yeah. Pol Poland Zelensky. Po Poland Zelensky and Levin Poland. Levin Poland. <laughs> it's not good. Woo! None of it is, none of it's good. <laughs> Nearly said Roman Polanski, but he's he's not there. Okay. Yeah. Just a couple more qualifiers, I think, in the sort of June period, yes. the Intercontinental Games. Yeah, a couple uh, of catch-up matches, and then a couple of qualifiers to finalise, and then they'll, uh, they'll be the that'll be the end. The rest of the teams will be decided. Yeah, we'll know. Yes. Um, okay. So that yeah, that sort of wraps up uh, that section there. So yeah, moving on. I've got um. Well, I have one. I have, I have one little interesting thing I I have here. Um. I should have brought up the article, I suppose, but uh, the I heard that um, Ralph R Ralph Rangnick, the the manager of Manchester United at the moment, he had a meeting with the English FA, and essentially the topic of the meeting was uh, the the poor refing that we have seen lately, the the bad calls of VAR and and all sorts of things like that. Lots of people arguing with refs as well, and a lot of drama in that regard, and. Uh, Ralph Rangnick's suggestion essentially was they should start getting the refs to start training with clubs. So, for instance, you know, a ref, yeah, he will come train with whatever team. I don't know if it would necessarily be the team that he's going to uh, ref, like, but he'll be training with, you know, neutral teams in the meantime. Yeah. In a way to build rapport with players, I think, and to sort of get a we'll get an idea of the kind of football game everyone wants to play so getting a more of a perspective from the player's position because yeah. the ref is going to be well in some way he'll probably be doing player roles as well because he'll be yeah. training as a player but also ref yes so yeah what, what are your thoughts on that that idea um i think it's a very good idea i think it's certainly a good idea because one thing in football that we see that um you know um, a lot of a, a lot of other sports have um, in drives is respect for the officials. You, like, f footballers are piss poor at uh, this, basically, at having respect for for referees. Um, and don't get me wrong, there's some poor refereeing. Uh, but like you say, chucking a referee into into training with professionals. Um, and talking about them, maybe they should give, you know, uh, not a lecture, but they should speak with each other, obviously, before the game, before the training. And then they'll kind of know, like you say, where each other's coming from and make a more balanced game. Hmm. Oh, okay, so uh, it also says here that, at, so at, at current, referees are all trained together. Uh, separate from clubs mm. uh, a few times a week they all train together and then before their delegated fixtures they all take off so yeah they already are training in that way I, yeah it makes total sense i don't see why they shouldn't be sort of integrated with uh the teams because like you said they um yeah it's gonna be a lot harder to swear in the face of someone of you mate. see every thursday yeah yeah <laughs> and um it says also here too that uh Rangnick and also Jurgen Klopp have suggested that the Premier League needs to introduce specialist VAR officers and remove that responsibility from the referee on the on the field. Um, if we're going to keep VAR, I agree. Yeah, I don't want to keep VAR, but if we're going to, well, um, one thing I can't help but think about is like, I don't know about you, like after I've after I've gone from a, like a run, I finished the run. The, the moments immediately preceding that it's a little bit hard to think in the in the moment you know if you've just done a big run down the pitch and then you've got to run across and look at the screen and make a decision you know your heart's beating fucking hardcore yeah that can affect your decision and it's better to have someone neutral not and yeah and you're dealing with the players directly so you're not being neutral is more difficult if you are right in there and the players are yelling in your face and they're saying oh he handballed he Mm. did this he did that it's like we, well and, and i don't know well and it's gonna re well i think if the decision is not made by the ref to the players they can't they probably will still aim their complaints at the ref but 
but ultimately the ref can't change anything if the decision is someone up in a skybox or some shit. Hmm. And it, um, you know, you, you, like you say, the referees currently all train together. Um, and, 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 you know, a huge um, complaint targeted at referees in England is none of you have played the game. Like none of you have played at a professional level, you don't know what it's like. Yeah, exactly. You, you and, and if you if the referees are all together training together, they're going to talk to referees and they're going to go, "Oh, do you think players are aggressive?" No, bad. It's like, yeah. So, well, mm. you, you know, at, I'm not saying that that's wrong. Well, that particular statement, but it can get a bit uh, echo chambery. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, and and I agree because I think then refs may go and start. Uh, interacting with players more and realize that the players are like no no we want to play this rough game like <laughs> uh, we, yeah. w- we want you to make sure we can play that game we don't want you to stop that like it, you know it could be something like that that's what I'm, so there's a different understanding of the game and how it should be played from each perspective and i think to make a better game to ref you want input from the players as well because you want to deliver the game that they want to play that everyone wants to play. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. I'm, I'm totally on board with this. Um, and it, it, like you say, even if it means, um, you know, a lot of driving for, you know, oh, this week you're going to train with Liverpool and then you're going to go and ref, you know, in Manchester. Or you're going to train with Crystal Palace and you're going to go ref mm-hmm. at, at Chelsea, best and Villa game. Fine. Good. Yeah. At, at, you know, get revolved around um, teams and eventually, you know, mm. it'll probably make you more neutral as well. Yeah. See, I think, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great suggestion. And of course you can, you would, you would think that this is going to come from Rob's history with the Bundesliga and how, you know, that they sort of have a bit more support for their um, like football structure yeah definitely their, their, their coaches are paid yeah the end of sentence like yeah. <laughs> you know so yeah. there's that the, they have a lot more they, and they, there's more of them yeah so and i think uh yeah we uh, the the english fa needs to seriously look at the way they do it in other countries and try and just accumulate all of the best things from all of them to make a better league yeah i thoroughly agree hmm. i'm very happy with um with Rolf, yeah. Well, it, it, from, yeah, from what I said now, it was it was a meeting of uh, all of the managers, and they, uh, after he said that, basically all of them backed him. All of them agreed. Good. Yeah. Well. Hmm. Yeah. Me like that a lot. So yeah, that's cool. I think it's awesome. I, it, it's good to see. Well, you know, like R- R- Rangnick is supposed to move into a um, advisory role for Man U in the future, and it's like this is kind of what he's doing now, right? He's showing like where right. how his strength as an advisor. Yeah, well, he's maybe he should some... be a, an advisor for the FA. Yeah, he's well, he, he's Instead. got good football ideas. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's like you know, there's an ideas guy, and then you need the guy that puts the ideas, the implement, where the rubber, yeah, the implement, yeah, yeah. So he's an ideas guy, maybe not necessarily an implementer, but. Yeah. A good, he's got good ideas. Philosopher, yes, that actually that's an even better way to put it. Yeah, he is a football philosopher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we like we like them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what else have you got written down? Okay, the the only last thing I have written down here is the the retirement of a football le- legend. He's a legend. He's a legend. Yeah. He's an, an English football legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, a world Premier, famous in England. He's a Premier League legend, um, and he's certainly world famous in in um, Spurs. Well, I was going to say in Sunderland for his <laughs> um, for his work with that young boy with with cancer who sadly passed away. But oh um, yes, um, look, hey, a player of twenty two years played all across the country and and outside of it for the country and was just awesome mm. Jermaine Defoe ladies and gentlemen here he comes yeah so uh, yeah yeah. J- Jermaine Defoe has, has just retired I think he how old is he now he's, I would say he's, he's I want to say 40 he's 40-ish yeah so saying here that he scored 20 goals in 57 games for England um, between 2004 and 2017 yep 
uh, until retiring at 39 from England. So that's good late retirement there. So no, professionally. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. And could you play professionally? Oh, I read that wrong. I'm going to say. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, good success at, at Sunderland. It says uh, Premier League history was... Uh, 162 goals in 496 appearances. Um, yeah, see that one in one in three does not tell the tale of um, well uh, of, of how good a goal scorer he I think he was. Well, that that makes him the the ninth highest goal scorer in Premier League history. So I mean, that's not that's you know it's absolutely nothing to shake a stick at. And I, I think he he played in a time too where goals were harder to come by with yeah he he played in some parts of you know premier league history where the best defenders were playing mm. for him, for other teams or where he was deployed in a strike partnership or when he played yes. for portsmouth for example yeah well yeah i suppose it doesn't mention his assists or anything here too um but it says that so his final appearance was nil draw uh at lincoln it was his last match. He was in the game for 22 years. So 22 years since his professional debut at 17 years old, which was in ni- well, last century, in, in 1999. So, yeah, 20, 22 years in the game is pretty good. And, um, and see, this guy, if if anyone, is is the um, one of the next inductees for the Hall of Fame. In, in, in my mind there's no more perfect time to bring him in either but i can i can see why they'd probably wait given that he's um literally finished playing this week yeah yeah so one yeah one big mention you you brought it up was uh his his services to charity where um yeah he received an, an obe for um helping underprivileged children um and yeah so bradley bradley lowry was the that's the kid, right yeah who that's died who died of the child who died of cancer at age six and he obviously did a lot of um you know charity work around that and um helped him out so it was very good he you know obviously model model citizen yeah. model citizen personality yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's in there yeah yeah um and yeah so yeah a le- another legend has retired at a uh, good ripe age too you know he's he, he it's 39 40 is a, a good age yeah thoroughly agree hmm. um always thought defoe was class um and you know 160 goals in the premier league doesn't they don't score themselves you know yeah yeah exactly yeah it's class mm-hmm. right um so congratulations, Jermaine. Let's do let's do a preview. Yep. Last thing we have to do is, is a preview for next week. And straight off the bat. Straight off the bat. Yeah. There's, there's a there's a good one. Liverpool at home to Watford. And good God, um, I, you know I wish I had it in front of me the stats of our um, returns after international breaks, but I I think it's I think it's good, and I really. I mean, our form is obviously blistering. Indeed. And, you know, this is the last one uh, before a very hard month of April. So we need to win. And we need to win convincingly. Yeah. Because uh, next game after that, we're off to Benfica. So we've got to, we've got to win. Yeah, no no time to drop points. because yeah. Like, yeah, so you've got this match, and then it's Benfica, and then it's City, and then it's Benfica again. And then it's Man City again. Yikes! Yes. So yeah, we're we're in for a hard one. But Oof. yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a fun fun times. So, uh, next up, we have uh, Brighton will take on Norwich. Oh, the the Battle of the Birds. Battle of the, yeah. the Gulls versus the Canaries. Canaries yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, once again, bird fight. Cr- Graham Graham Potter's decent. Brighton have done pretty well. But if you lose to Norwich, you lose your job. Yep. yep. You know that. We all know. Yep. All right, and then so yeah. Probably, probably give that one to the the gay boys. Um, <laughs> you can't, can't call them that. <laughs> well, it's Brighton. What do you want me to say? Yeah, yeah. I know the Bru- pl- I know the players aren't gay, but the the places probably a win for the gay boys then. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, we have Burnley will take on Manchester City. So that's that's exactly why 
you you cannot drop points. Yes, it's because it's because Burnley are about to. That's probably a sure win for Man City. Probably a a brutal win. Actually, it could be. Well, look, we've we've said that before, um, but I mean, look, Burnley's. I think one of Burnley's most common score lines is nil nil. Yeah. Um, yeah. and a nil nil at home against Man City. I might be um, looking at this through mm. uh, rose-tinted spectacles. It's not unheard but of. It, it's not out of the question. Mm. But more likely it's probably like 3 or 4 nil to Man City. Yep, yep, something like that. Okay, so next uh, we have our, our third place hot on the tail, but Chelsea will take on Brentford, the Brentford Bees. Yeah. Um, so this is a random question. What? Chelsea's a lion. It's a lie, ah, oh, because yeah. it's very similar to like the dragon from like the Welsh flag, you know. Yeah. Do you get that? Uh, I mean, yeah. Mm. Uh, something that like gets brought up all the time is like, what? Why do European cities and logos include lines? Like, I mean, I know it was on there and too late, but no one in Europe had seen a line, so they were probably were just like so. As far as well, that, uh, as far as our continent is concerned, a dragon may as well be a lion. Uh, they probably would have had lions in traveling circuses. Yep. So people probably would have seen them. So. One at a time. Yeah, like yeah, a fire breathing lion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So fire breathing, fire breathing lions versus the the bees. Yep. Okay. You, you, I mean, if that were the battle, you've probably got to put it in the hands of the the paws of the fire yeah. breathing line surely there's Chelsea yeah all day um, next up we have Leeds to take on Southampton yes um, Leeds are hemorrhaging goals well they had their they had their glorious win there. they still conceded two goals yeah yeah like well, Pat- two- Patrick Bamford is, is back for now um, so maybe that's some good luck but- maybe but at the yeah. same time but yeah, you're, you're right. They're, 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 they're patchy. Southampton, also patchy, but slightly less so at the moment. Southampton are probably the favourite there, but... Leeds, Leeds concede a lot. Southampton don't concede a lot. Uh, yeah, but... It could go either way, really. It's hard to say. I'm going to say Southampton will win. Okay. Uh, next up we have the Wolves versus Aston Villa. It's, a, it's another line. Another line? So it's yeah. like the same chip? Uh, yeah, it's a, a, just facing a different way. Huh, that's weird. Okay. It's like, oh, we're, we're the yellow lion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's a, a battle, a, a Midlands... Wolves vs. Lions. Midlands derby. Yeah, Wolves vs. Yeah. Lions. Well, that's a that's a tough match again. Um, Stevie G's a good coach. Villa have plenty of good players as well. But Wolves are just such a hard team to break down, man. They, they play every game at 100. And, and and also miserly, miserly at the back. The, difficult to they find it difficult well, to score. Well, also, well, while I was thinking about it, I don't think they've had a bad game all season. But they've lost games, sure, but they play great in them. I don't think they've they, they've, they've never really had a bad game. They're, I like that. I like yeah. that theory. That's um, it's not something I disagree with. Yeah, they're, they're very consistent. Yeah, like one all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then. So next up, we have, yeah, Manchester United will take on Leicester. Now, I, look again. Look. I know, I know, Leicester are not exactly battling you for um, the fourth space, but you got to win. They, we need to win, and I don't, I don't think Leicester have been performing up to no. So it, this is a good time, good time to probably play them, mm-hmm. um, get well, them out of the way, kick their ass, and we've had. The, the problem we've had you know a lot of players on international break and I, I think sometimes that's a good thing because it, well, I, it I, keeps I hope momentum well I hope it's good for Bruno because he can probably have a bit more confidence yes and, well, and Ronaldo as well too so it's even then I hope yeah I hope they're, they're not too depleted because we're probably going to need them for this game I just in case I don't every point is crucial at this point and we've got to win no question yeah Another team in the fourth race battle. Yes. Fourth fourth place fourth place race. You're right. It's Everton. Oh wait, just kidding. <laughs> no, it's West Ham who are playing Everton. Yes. Um three points three points. Three there. points yep. to West Ham. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so up next, uh <laughs> Yeah, unironically that's my entire coverage. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty trash. It's not going good. 
Spurs will play Newcastle. <sighs> See, Newcastle, good run of form, good confidence. There's no reason that they shouldn't be able to take that game to Spurs. But Spurs have Spurs have broke their but Spurs cycle. have broke, now broken their win loss win loss mm-hmm. um, cycle, like you said. Um, I can probably see this being a draw until the 90th minute, and then Harry Kane will score a penalty. They got away. I'm going to say, I, yeah, they 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 really do. And the this pressure's is, on them too. This is a good one to show. Yeah, a bit of a bit of mental toughness. It'd be. It's easy to it's easy to underestimate Newcastle at the moment. I think they're they're in a very good headspace, and um, yeah, be they have to be on they have to play a good game to win that. I think absolutely. And then we have um, future league champions Crystal Palace. We'll take- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a, that's a very 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 niche comment. Yeah, sorry. What was the de- the, yeah? Inform our our, uh, lis- uh, our listener. Uh, uh, so our listener should know that um, I'm currently playing football manager. And in the year, I th- it's, it's at the 23-24 season. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the team to break up my mono- league-winning monopoly is um, soon to be Crystal Palace. So um, I don't know where that came from because last season they were not good. Season before that, they were not good. Mm-hmm. Um, I sold them one of my youth players for $11 million and um, he's the top assist maker. Uh, got uh, so got I, I probably should have kept him. Unlucky, yeah. Yeah, unlucky. Well, so Crystal Palace are going to take on Arsenal in real life. Yeah, a real life football game. In a real life match, yeah. And uh, Crystal Palace are on a upward uh, a rise uh, again at the moment. Uh, they dipped for a bit. They come up a little bit now, but this is probably... I still think Arsenal are probably ready to yeah. knock them back down. I'd say Arsenal has been consistent enough. Even oh, Arsenal my has one been, struggle would be it's they're away from home. And away from home, Arsenal are not, it's not, it's not, too not far from strong. Home, well, yeah, but that's... They don't have to travel. Exactly, but not exactly how that works. Yeah, I get you, but... Um, yeah, um, you know, yeah, Paddy V stood up to uh, City recently, of course. It's not... It, it wouldn't yeah. be unheard of to stand up against Arsenal, who play are trying to play a very similar style to City. Yeah. They may be able to um, frustrate them in the same way. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, Arsenal's form has been a consistent upward gradient. It, yeah. it, it did. It wasn't. It was poor bad at the start. start, and it has only gone upwards. Yeah. So Arsenal they're would still, still be. Like, they're still my pick for fourth, by the way. Yep. Yeah, yeah I, I'd probably agree with that. Um, unfortunately, but but if there's a game that they're going to drop points in, this would be one. I would hope so. Man, yeah. <laughs> I I hope so. And then the last one we have here is a second match for these two teams. Burnley will play Everton. And loser, <laughs> loser of that gets relegated. It's probably going to be like a battle of who can score the best own goal. Well, it'll be Michael Keane. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. Who, who, yeah, look, whoever loses that probably gets relegated. Surely, but, look, but, but honestly. Both, both of those teams still need to play Watford. Yeah. Who are the other team... That's actually Plain. a really important match, and Everton. It's huge. Everton have to have to fucking win that match. So, so do Burnley. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it's 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 worse stakes for Everton to be relegated. I think so. Um. Yeah, I would agree. Mm. As a as a as a club, yes, I would agree. Um. Mm-hmm. But it would be hilarious. Yes. Okay. So that concludes the preview for this weekend. Now. Uh, just before we go, I do have one last thing to tell you, and I can't hundred percent remember it. Um, I won lottery. The lottery. Barcelona have not confirmed, but uh, they have made two signings. Oh, yeah. Uh, they well, they have have signed to on uh, end of contract. Is it me? No, oh. unfortunately not. Um, one of them is believed to be Christensen. From, oh, yeah, from, from Chelsea. Chelsea, yeah. And the other one is... Messi. Rafinha with the PH. Oh, yeah? Yeah, okay. From Leeds. So, um, apparently, both of those deals are done, They're, but they start started next season. Right. Mm. Okay, yeah, I mean... Do they... It, do, are they ever going to stop signing forwards? They're well, just going to do it to themselves again. Um, well, the thing is, I think... Now that they understand the new the new rule with the uh, wage budget, uh, they did 
they've 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 reformatted their wage structure. So once they remove all the ones they get rid of now, they can actually they'll still have sign 20, a shitload of players. They'll still have twenty nine forwards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, look with how much that wage bill, how much would have been missing? A lot. Yeah, I it, think half a mil. Exactly. So like, there's they can get they can sign a bunch of players in at that um at, at yeah on that using that wage budget. So um so right. I'm just looking it up to confirm. I yeah. Christensen is confirmed or uh, well, not confirmed, <laughs> but likely. <laughs> yes, and um. Oh no! I was. I'm sorry. The the other one is also not confirmed, but apparently done. Frank Kessie. Oh yeah, Frank, Frank Yannick Kessie Frank, from AC Milan. Look, Frank yeah. the Tank, mate. That's a that's a killer signing. They they he is he is going to be the successor to Sergio Busquets, from what I understand. Well, it, he's he's a physical specimen. He's Yolo, Yolo <laughs> Toure Mark Two. Oh yeah, yeah. And by Yolo, I mean yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, Yolo Toure actually just is both of them. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. If they're like a Power Ranger, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> now I don't know whether to whether we should call the the cast Yolo Toure or Diablo Maradona. Uh, 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 Diablo Maradona. I already decided. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to say Yolo Toure again next week, so it gets named that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So wow, uh, killer signings. So uh, you know, Absolutely. If Barcelona lose Messi and Griezmann and uh, you know a big list. And they and to replace total, they have added Eric Garcia, Memphis Depay, Aboma Yang, Danny Alves, Adama Traore, uh, Christensen, and then now Frank Kessie, and then apparently Rafinha as well. Yep, that's pretty sad. That's I mean that's a lot of players. <laughs> they are on the rebuild, and I think they are both Barcelona and Real Madrid are due for it, and I think they're trying to get ahead of it. I think that's wise. The 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 symbolic part of Messi leaving is probably the perfect time to start to start rebuilding and with these got, with these guys you've got Xavi in charge and they're gonna another symbolism they're gonna bring on yeah exactly that's it, it, it's <laughs> very uh, prophetic you know it's all lining up it looks yeah. it looks awesome yeah the totally Barcelona project will probably be it could be pretty fearsome in a few years sounds like a shit D&B group yeah yeah <laughs> well look they honestly they they have a surprising amount to catch up on in only what has been a few seasons. The the gap that Man City and Liverpool have created between the rest of Europe is massive. I don't know about that, but well, there's a, the standard is now higher, and Barca is not at that standard. That they, is, they, that is fair. and they probably will be back. The, the 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 gap between Liverpool, Man City, and Barcelona is widening, but they're Looking to rectify that, and fucking fair well, enough. Real Madrid and Bayern, of course, are still doing very well, and PSG not far behind. But yeah, yeah, a few other teams, peripheral ones, have dropped off a bit. But it looks like everyone is willing to strengthen now, especially now we're through COVID. I think there will be a lot more. There could be a lot of a lot of change up after we're through all of this, just because because players will actually be willing to move. Clubs will be willing to make those moves. Precisely. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's about everything. Uh, any, anything you want to say before we go? Diablo Maradona. Yeah. Okay. That's great. All right. Uh, remember to like and subscribe and tell your friends that this is the Football Friend Podcast and it's a great time when you listen in. Yes. All right. So, yeah. And uh, go ahead and drop a comment if you uh, disagree with anything we say or if you just want to say how much you enjoy the show. Right. Well, uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, have a good one. Later.